Greetings from the CM Russell Museum. Executive Director Tom Figarelli here again, welcoming you to another installment of the 2020 Art in Action Artists Showcase. Um, obviously, the dynamics of the COVID means that we have to do all of our auction remotely. And that is true for Art in Action, which is a fan favorite. It's an opportunity for artists to participate in a variation of a quick draw uh, where they're finishing work while they interact with guests. Uh, and then we sell that art. Um, so to try to capture at least a little bit of that, the personality of our artists, their creative spirit and energy, we have these showcases. It's an interview with each participating artist to talk about their world, their life, uh, and art. So we hope you enjoy it. And we're really delighted to be joined by Nancy Cadre, who's been a longtime partner and friend of the CM Russell Museum, a proud member of the Russell Skull Society of Artists, and just a wonderful person. So Nancy, thank you for joining us. Oh, happy to be here, Tom. Well, we're just delighted. And, you know, have you been, as everything's been going on in this world, how is, uh, have you been able to endure and, and get through all of these challenges? Well, fortunately, my, my immediate family is right here in town, so I have a couple of grandkids, and we're kind of form a pod, and we've had a lot of fun time together. A lot, a lot outside at the beach and at the, at the playgrounds and different things as soon as they opened up anyway, but it's, it's, I can't say it has not been challenging in a lot of ways. I mean, sure. I, quite frankly, I miss seeing people smiling because I can't see if they're smiling because they're behind a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate that. Yeah, I can appreciate that. You, know, you look to their eyes and you do smile with your eyes. You're good at that. But, oh, well, thank you. Well. <laughs> That's why I don't play poker, so. Very, oh, yes, yeah. you could not. No, you're quite right. <laughs> Well, no, that is that is such a, a, a positive thing to be able to be around family and friends who, you know, their circle, so you can feel safe around them. Mm -hmm. uh, and gosh, I mean, that just really enriches our, our emotional and spiritual health being around loved ones. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you and Steve have had that opportunity. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So, you know, Art in Action, as we noted, is, is such a unique event because it is showcasing just not art. I mean, it's showcasing artists and it is a time for people to build community, um, fellowship, and just to have some really fun experiences together. Now, the pandemic doesn't allow that. So just generally speaking, as an artist, what draws you to an art and action type event? Well, okay. I have to say, I think my life was kind of transformed a number of years ago when I did a lot of community theater in our small town, Montana, at Thompson Falls where my husband and I, Steve, were running a boarding school and doing community theater and getting to play Annie Oakley with blazing guns and belting out those Ethel Merman-like songs. It was awesome. So that sort of prepared me for quick draws, art and action, all of the above. It, it, was, my, it was my training, my boot camp. And uh, since then, gosh, I don't know how many quick draws I've done. I probably do four, five, six a year if things wow. are normal times because I've done it at the Booth Museum and the and the Cody Museum and with you guys for many years, probably 20 years with you all. So it's awesome. You know, I, I, re, I sort of always thought I was a little bit of an introvert, but I have to say uh, doing theater brought that out, but also this COVID thing has brought that out too. I said, no, I really like to be with my fellow human beings. I like to have tea with my friends and play pickleball with with them and just connect with them and it's it, the art and action does that in such a wonderful way uh the format that you guys have have devised i much prefer to quick draws where you're under pressure and you really can't visit very much i've really gotten to know a lot of the people in great falls who fly in from all over the country and i get to reconnect with them and i have time to visit with them because the art and action has hours of wonderful time with them. I like that. I like it very much. Well, that's good. And I, without question, I know patrons would say the same just to, about you and about fellow artists is that, that that's something they really look forward to and that they mm -hmm. celebrate is being able to see each other once a year, if nothing else, uh, reminisce, talk about life and great art. So uh, we're delighted to hear that. And did I almost hear you say that you'd be willing to do a show tune for us then at a following? Uh, you did not hear that. Oh, okay. But, uh, okay. To be, to be announced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I can appreciate how your background would prepare you quite well for art in action. Um, well, uh, you know, could you tell us a little bit about the piece that you have behind you? Yeah, you know, the pretty different, uh, pretty different subject matter. And, um, and medium actually it's acrylic and it's just a, a bunch of big 
Hereford cows, I like to say Hereford cows, because you see, that's where I first were introduced to them in Britain. So ah. they're really fun to paint. And I wanted to just do something big and outrageous because you know, you're kind of, we're kind of quarantined down. I said, you know, so I've been doing Hereford cows, I've been doing hibiscus, all manner of different things. And I don't know yet what I'm gonna do for the, uh, for the art and action for the Russell, but something different because you all are gonna have a much bigger audience out there. And who knows what people might like. I mean, I, th I think it's a very t well-traveled crowd that comes to these events and it's gonna be even more broad uh, with you guys doing it on the internet. So yeah, so th these are just some cows. I really like, I like cows. I like the way they look out at you with their ears sticking straight out. Uh, they're sort of funky and fun and I had a lot of fun doing it. I really did. I did it almost like a quick draw. In fact, I. I did a, a, what's it called, the slow-mo time-lapse thing. And it's pretty, it looks like I'm painting really fast. I mean, super speed fast <laughs> with those time-lapse things. But uh, yeah, but I did it probably over a period of about three days. Excellent. Well, and funky yeah. and fun, I like that as a, a yeah. you know, two adjectives for that. Um, and you said acrylic. I mean, that's a departure from your usual medium, right? It is. It is. And I've been doing some oil and I've, you know, what I've done mostly, I think, except for one year at the, at the Art in Action, I, I do mostly dye on silk. And right. I tend to do Western things um, because people come to the Sam Russell and, and, you know, that's kind of what they like. Although I've, ha I've sold hibiscus out of my room at the Russell too. So who knows, out of my booth at the, with the Skull Society or a skunk or a pig. I mean, I like to do it all. Craig Barrett collects my skunks. I like that. I'm sorry, my pigs, my pigs. Your pigs, your them, pigs. My pigs, well, yeah. You might be interested in skunks now too. You never hey, know, but yeah, you there you go. Know. Charlie Russell liked painting skunks. He did, he, he most certainly <laughs> did. Well, good. Well, and a variety indeed is the spice of life. Um, so no, we appreciate that. You know, I, as you're approaching your art, Nancy, I mean, what, what is your process? I mean, take us through, if you will, from, from idea to, uh, you know, your, your final finishes. How do you get a piece turned into, into life here? Okay. Well, I'll talk about the silk painting because that's sort of what my medium has been. That's what people know me for. But here, I'm going to show you. Here, I did this hibiscus. Can you see it there? Sure can, absolutely, we like, yeah. We haven't been to Hawaii for a while, but I've had lots of, we've been, we were there, oh, quite a few times as our son was growing up. We'd go to the beach and camp out, it was wonderful. Well, that's a beautiful So when piece. I start a piece like that, like a hibiscus, I, I draw it, I've got all these photographs I work from. I often will, will tape all the photos across a long kind of storyboard uh, because I like to look at some options. Oh, this bloom would look nice here. You're sort of designing the composition. And that's, that's a really fun part. The design part of a painting is really fun part. Uh, a guy I studied with a long time ago, R.S. Riddick, said, used to, he studied with Sergei, Sergei Bongart, some of the Russian guys. And he used to say with a Russian accent, it doesn't matter. No, what he, he would say, okay, ah, no amount of good painting can save a bad composition. Ah. And I always, I think about that every time I started painting. So think about the design, the composition, the values. I mean, people all think, oh, you're an artist. You're so lucky. You're so right brain. I said, well, my left brain plays heavily into in the equation. Seriously. Sure, sure. You have to have some yeah. engineering to you. Engineering. Yeah. You've got to engineer good paintings. You have to use some, some techniques. Some, your left brain has to kick in big time in that part of it. Um, you know, one of the reasons I sometimes like the art and action things that because you have to kind of, you've got all that part done and then you can just have fun and let your right brain just take off and be spontaneous uh, while you're visiting with people. So there's kind of a balance of the two. But once I get that hibiscus drawn, let's say with my brush, long brush, uh, you know, a good two foot brush or something, I uh, then I save that form and then I can go back in I'll grab it. I can go back in and do the whole background, very wet, using throwing salt at it and alcohol and all kinds of strange and wondrous materials, which create different effects. And that's very fun uh, to do. I think it's unusual as a medium because of that. Uh, I know I know some people can use uh, 
turpentine and do some things, do some drip things, but I really kind of like, I don't want to control this painting. I want to guide it to its end. A lot of people say, how do you know when you're done? Well, you put it away for a day or two or a week and take it back out. And then sometimes being your brain will say, ah, I just need that one little highlight and it's done. But it took me, it took me a while to figure that one out. And I think that when young artists, when they ask me, I say, do a thousand skies, do a thousand hibiscus, do a thousand horses. And then you will have a sense of, you know, your, your composition, your design, your color, your form. Yeah, you, it can't start out right out of the chute. You have to kind of work at that stuff, I think. So. Well, that's interesting. I mean, especially you mentioned it, something about plot is just you allowed the piece to guide you. So it's almost that it has a little bit of an organic quality to its it own, does. that they it do. makes some decisions for you a little bit. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes some decisions. And I kind of like that. I don't want to be totally in charge here. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, that's excellent. No, I appreciate that. Well, and, you know, speaking about your work, um, we're excited to be able to host an exhibition of yours this fall called Forever Glacier. Um, and it's just a, a wonderful series of works. And I just would wonder if you could share a little bit of a synopsis for folks. Sure. Um, I've, I've always liked doing big animals. And I think the quick draws and the art and actions have really uh, fed that, that need of mine. I like seeing them. I like painting them. I like to do a lot of color with them to kind of evoke their, their energy and their wonderful spirit. So uh, five, six, seven, actually longer than ago than that, I started doing some big animals. But about five years ago, Steve and I talked about this because I needed help with the whole idea and concept. Of, gosh, if I do these one by one, can we, maybe we could amass a show and I don't know what would happen with that show. Should we, what should we do with it, blah, blah, but don't sell them, don't sell the originals, keep them, frame them. Uh, so I started doing the big animals. I actually was asked to do a centennial uh, painting for the, uh, for the uh, uh, Glacier Park. We live only 20 some miles from the entrance of Glacier Park. So that's been an inspiration for me for a long time. Love going into the park. We took a group, many, many groups of teenage kids in there. And we'd see these animals and I love seeing the expression of a kid from Los Angeles when he first saw, he first saw a moose or, you know, I mean, it is pretty, they're huge and they're long legged and they're wonderful or a bugling elk, which you've got over your shoulder, I think. Um, yeah, that's so right. started doing these one by one and it took a while. It's, it's probably been five years from beginning to end, although I did a couple of signature pieces longer ago than that. I did one of going to the Sun Road that took me almost a year to do all the trees and the whole legend around the side. So that's gonna be in the exhibit. But these big animals, some I did fairly realistically simple color, others I just went crazy because it was fun to do really outrageous, uh, an outrageous coyote or an outrageous black bear that has very little black on it. You know, he's, he's very colorful and fun. I hope it'll appeal to a lot of across the ages, but also kids. I think kids will go, wow. You know, if they're not too intimidated by the color, I think they'll enjoy the fun of it. Well, I think you're absolutely right. And you know, anybody who spent just even an ounce of time in Glacier can say there's something magical about Glacier Park mm -hmm. and the landscape and the creatures there. And you as an artist and your medium lends itself so well to capture that magic. I know people are gonna really enjoy it. There's this wonderful educational component to the exhibition. It's gonna engage people of all ages and it's gonna present Glacier in a really fun, um, informative and inspirational way. So we're excited to be able to open that here uh, in October and folks will see more information coming out about that exhibition from the museum. But we just wanna say we're so grateful uh, to, to have that exhibition here and are excited uh, for, for October for those reasons. Well, thanks, Tom. You know, and I have to say, I wanna thank all the folks who came to Great Falls the last 20 years who helped support me as an artist and made it made me able to be able to do something this big a project i mean it, it was a big one it was a big one so well no it's doubt done, it's created it's ready to come to you so well that's fantastic no you have friends and patrons uh, across north america no doubt that have uh, been so excited to see your career and your work um each year here in great falls and we're just grateful to have you here um what has been every march but will now be <laughs> Uh, this September virtually uh, though. So we appreciate uh, Nancy your, your time 
uh, this afternoon. And we want to say thank you too to DA Davidson Companies who sponsors Art in Action and underwrites all of our educational programming here at the CM Russell Museum. We're grateful that Davidson Companies not only supports education, but the art and soul of the American West. And we're also uh, wanting to recognize uh, our partners at Stiefel who support um, our sponsorship of different artists at Art in Action um, and Nancy Codry as a Russell Skull Society of Artists. So Nancy, once again, thank you for your time and uh, we're excited for the 2020 Russell. Thanks, Tom. Okay, signing Thanks. off. I hope to see you sometime along the path, right? Yes, we look okay. forward to it. Take okay, care. Okay, dear. Bye-bye.